Okay, welcome back to the lectures on transform calculus and in the last lecture we have studied a Fourier transform and its properties. So, today we will continue this lecture for the application part and we will discuss uh, its application to partial differential equations. So, the procedure is very similar what we have done in the case of Laplace transform. So, for a given partial differential equation we will apply the Fourier transform to both the side of the equation and then this partial differential equation will be transformed to a simpler ordinary differential equation that we will solve and the at the end by taking the inverse uh, Fourier transform of the solution of this ordinary differential equation we will arrive for the solution of the original partial differential equation. So, before uh, I go for the example let me just summarize uh, some formulas and the properties of the Fourier transform. So, we have here uh, the Fourier cosine and sine transform. So, Fourier cosine transform was uh, just denoted by f c hat alpha and the definition was uh, square root 2 over pi and integral 0 to infinity f u cos alpha u uh, d u and the its inverse the so Fourier co cosine inverse of this f hat c will be just f x and this is given by square root 2 over pi 0 to infinity f c hat alpha cos alpha x d alpha. Similarly, we have for the sine transform instead of this cos alpha u we have sin alpha u and similarly here this in place of cos alpha x we have sin alpha x t alpha and then we uh, studied this Fourier transform. So, in this case the Fourier transform of f we will also denote by this f hat alpha because this is a function of alpha now 1 over square root 2 pi and the integral over the whole axis and we have f u e i alpha u d u and for the inverse we have again the same uh, constant there 1 over square root 2 pi and minus infinity to plus infinity and then we have f hat alpha and this will be e power minus i alpha x and the integral over this d alpha. So, these are the main properties or uh, mainly the derivative uh, theorem for the Fourier transform and uh, Fourier cosine and sine transform. So, first for the Fourier cosine transform we will use this uh, uh, for the first derivative it will be alpha and Fourier sine transform of f and minus square root 2 over pi f uh, 0 and this uh, is the the condition under which we got this result that was that f x approaches to 0 as x approaches to infinity. <coughs> for the second derivative, so for your cosine transform of the second derivative of f we have minus square root 2 over pi f prime 0 minus alpha square for your cosine transform of f x and in this case we have uh, this result under the conditions that f x and f prime x so the first derivative and the function itself approaches to 0 as x approaches to 0. So, these are the conditions uh, other than the existence uh, conditions we have. Similarly, for the sine we have Fourier sine transform of f prime x is simply minus alpha Fourier cosine transform of <coughs> f x and Fourier sine transform of the double prime is a square root 2 over pi alpha f 0 minus alpha square f sine transform of x and for the Fourier transform we have f prime x uh, is equal to minus i alpha f uh, the Fourier transform of f and for the double prime we have minus alpha square f uh, Fourier transform of f x and in this case also that f x and f prime x approaches to 0 as uh, uh, absolute value of x approaches to infinity. So, in, in these uh, cases so basically we will uh, solve today the partial differential equations mainly and in that case the function depends on two variables 
but we will get this Fourier cosine or sine or Fourier transform with respect to one variable. So, the same formulas will hold the other variable will be treated as constant. One more point we uh, yeah, I should mention here before we go for the, the examples that we have to see for a particular problem that which one is applicable whether we should apply the Fourier uh, cosine transform or Fourier sine transform or the Fourier transform. So, one is clear that when the limit of the variable where we will be taking the, the Fourier transform is from minus infinity to plus infinity, then we will of course, uh, apply this Fourier transform, but if our uh, range for the variable is given from 0 to infinity, then we have these two choices either Fourier cosine transform or Fourier sine transform. So, in these cases, uh, if we just look at the properties, the derivative properties here. So, for the Fourier cosine transform, for example, here in the double derivative, we will be using for the second order uh, partial differential equations. So, here this f prime 0 appears, whereas in this sine transform, this f 0 appears that the functional value at x is equal to 0 and this is the first derivative of that function at x is equal to 0. So, if this condition is given and the range of x is a 0 to infinity, we will apply the sine transform and if the first derivative this condition is given a uh, first derivative of 0 is whatever if this is given then we will apply the Fourier cosine transform and Fourier transform when the limit uh, when the range of that variable is from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, with this uh, information we continue now for the uh, different uh, partial differential equations. So, a short introduction uh, to partial differential equation uh, I have already given in Laplace transform case. So, we will directly go to the uh, application to PDEs. So, we will solve first the heat equation. Heat equation and that is k del 2 u over del x square del u over del t and our limits are minus infinity to plus infinity t as given positive. The boundary conditions are given u x t and u x x t both goes to 0 as absolute value of x goes to infinity and the initial conditions are f x 0 as f x. So, we have only the first derivative here. So, only one initial condition and for x minus infinity to plus infinity. So, here the choice of the Fourier transform is clear. So, we will apply here the Fourier transform because our variable is from minus infinity to plus infinity. Just remember for the Laplace transform, we, uh, <coughs> we applied Laplace transform with respect to t because t is always from 0 to uh, infinity, uh, t can vary from 0 to infinity, but now we will apply for the, for the x variable from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, now taking Fourier transform, with respect to x. So, what we will get here with respect to s is a double derivative and if we look at the table. So, the double derivative is minus alpha square and the Fourier transform of f x. So, we have minus k alpha square and Fourier transform I will denote by this alpha and t will remain as it is because we have taken with respect to this x, we have u x t. So, with respect to x we have taken. So, this x is replaced by alpha and the right hand side is d over d t will remain as it is and the Fourier transform of this u will be u hat and alpha t. So, what we get d u hat over d t plus k alpha square u hat alpha t is 0. Note that these boundary conditions for this problem we have already used here because 
the Fourier transform of this double derivative minus alpha square u hat alpha t, we have used these two boundary conditions. So, the solution of this ODE will be just the characteristic equation uh, or here directly we can uh, have this. So, d u hat over we can uh, separate the variable and we will get this ln u hat. So, it is clear that the solution is e minus k alpha square and the integral this side will be t and we have some constant of integration. So, we know now the Fourier transform of the initial conditions given u x 0 is f x. So, Fourier transform transform of the initial condition what we will get. So, u hat x will be alpha 0 and the Fourier transform of f x. So, f hat alpha. Now, we use this condition to get this constant. So, at t is equal to 0, we have f hat alpha. So, c is simply, so this implies that our c is f hat alpha and then we apply this. So, we get u hat alpha t is f hat alpha and e minus k alpha square t. Now, we take the inverse Laplace transform taking the inverse a uh, Fourier sorry Fourier transform not the Laplace Fourier transform what we get u x t if we directly apply the uh, definition of the inverse what we will get f hat alpha e minus k alpha square t and e minus i alpha x d alpha. So, now you note that that in this solution if we leave this here it is not a closed form at all because in this integral we are using this Fourier transform of f of the initial condition. So, it is better to have a, a solution which uh, does not have this uh, Fourier transform. We may have the initial condition because that is given all uh, already, but we uh, should not expect to have this Fourier transform. So, in order to avoid this what we do just uh, recall the convolution theorem. So, we had the Fourier transform of f star g was square root 2 pi and f hat alpha and g hat alpha. So, if we take the Fourier inverse transform here. So, f inverse of, of this the multiplication of two Fourier transform like we have here. So, if we know the inverse Fourier transform of this then we can get u x t just by the convolution of f and g. So, we let now that e minus k alpha square t <coughs> be the Fourier transform of g x. So, then by the definition what we have 1 over square root 2 pi and minus infinity to plus infinity e minus k alpha square t and e minus i alpha x d alpha. So, now we need to uh, evaluate this integral. So, for this we consider a bit simplified form. So, consider the integral i and then we will come back to this uh, integral again minus infinity to plus infinity e. So, here we have uh, with respect to alpha. So, this is alpha square. So, we take here some constant times alpha square this constant will be k t in our case and minus uh, just for the simplicity we take 2 b x and d x. So, here we have x and here also we have this alpha. So, what we do now we try to put this in the whole square form. Okay, so, minus infinity to plus infinity e minus square root a x this is the whole square and p b over square root a 
will give us the multiplication of these and 2 times 2 x b with minus. So, we have this term what extra we have here b square over a with minus. So, we have to add here b square over a and then d x. So, this e power b square by a we can take out of this integral. So, we have this integral e b square over a minus infinity to plus infinity minus a square root a x plus b over a square root a, a square and d x. Now, we substitute this a new variable a x plus b over a square root a to t. So, that we have d x is equal to d t over a square root a and this implies that i is e b square over a and we have minus infinity to plus infinity e minus this is t. So, we have t square and d x is d t over square root a. So, we have then this square root a we can take out of this integral. So, e b square over a and 1 over square root a and this integral minus infinity to plus infinity e minus t square d t that is a Gaussian standard integral we have a square root pi the value. So, we got this integral we had minus infinity to plus infinity e minus a x square minus 2 b x d x is equal to pi over a with a square root and e b square over a. So, if we let now because we want to go back to this integral. So, we will choose our a as k t and this 2 b is i x. So, a is k t and this 2 b or b is i x by 2. So, we will get the our required integral and we change this integral variable to alpha. So, e minus k t alpha square for this x square and minus 2 b. So, b is uh, 2 b is i x. So, minus i x and this x we replace to alpha. So, d alpha and we have pi over a is k t and we e b square is i square x square by uh, 4. So, here we have then b square. So, that is minus x square over you know, pi by a is k t. So, we have b square over a a is k t. So, we have k t and this 4 uh, comes from here. So, we have minus x square over 4 k t square root pi over k t. So, now we go back to this uh, integral uh, g x to equation 2. So, this we have evaluated and 1 over square root 2 pi will come. So, our g x is 1 over square root 2 pi and we have a square root pi and a square root this k t and e minus x square over 4 k t. So, we simplify this a square root pi will cancel out and we have a square root 2 k t from here and we have e minus x square 4 k t. And now, we can use the convolution theorem because we had this u alpha t is f hat alpha this the inverse transform we know and now for this also we know that g x is the inverse transform of this. So, we will use the convolution theorem. So, using convolution theorem we get u x t is 1 over square root 2 pi and this f x convolution with g x. So, this is 1 over square root 2 pi and we have this convolution minus infinity to plus infinity f beta and g x minus beta d beta. So, 1 over square root 2 pi 
and minus infinity to plus infinity we have f beta and g beta is given 1 over 2 k t e minus x square. So, x is now x minus beta over 4 k t and we have d beta. Again little uh, simplification we can made if we take z is equal to minus x minus beta over 4 k t. So, this one here so that we have the square again. So, this d z will be d beta over 4 k t. So, square root 2 square root 2 uh, we have this square root 4 k t and this d beta will be so, we have 1 over square root pi u x t because this square root 2 we can have with this square root 2. So, that we have exactly this term and minus infinity to plus infinity f for the beta we have to get uh, from here. So, that will be x plus a square root 4 k t and the z and we have e minus z square d z. So, this is the solution of the of the problem and we have in terms of the given uh, function f. Okay. So, now we take another problem where we uh, will apply the Fourier sine or cosine transform. So, we have the problem that k del 2 u over del x square is equal to del u over del t and x is between 0 and infinity t is positive. So, the boundary conditions are given u 0 t is u 0 for t positive or greater than equal to 0 and the initial conditions are given u x 0 is 0 and also that information del u and del u or del x and u both tend to 0 as x approaches to infinity. So, now the solution and now we note that this u is uh, specified at x is equal to 0. So, we have this boundary condition u is given at 0 and our range for the x is 0 to infinity. So, we have choice for a cosine or sine transform, but this u is given. So, let us uh, have a look again uh, for this properties. So, if we have the cosine transform, then we need here f prime 0, but this information is not given the problem for the for the sine transform we need f 0. So, this is given. So, we will apply the sine transform the choice is uh, very clear. So, let me just also write since u is specified at x is equal to 0 and the x is between 0 to infinity the Fourier sign transform is applicable to this problem. So, we take the Fourier transform taking Fourier transform Fourier sine transform sorry Fourier sine transform what we get. So, this k is there and for the del 2 u over del x square for the second derivative sine transform square root 2 pi alpha f 0 and minus alpha square for your sine transform. So, we have alpha and the square root 2 over pi the function value at 0 that is this is u 0 it is given minus we have alpha square and k is there already. So, k alpha square and the Fourier sine transform of u. So, Fourier sine transform of u and the right hand side we have with respect to t. So, this will remain 
as it is so this the differentiation and we have the sign transform of u. So, now what we have u s hat over d t plus k alpha square u s hat alpha t and this is uh, square root 2 over pi and we have k alpha and u naught. Okay. Now, the Now, we need to solve this equation. So, for that what we uh, get? We get the integrating factor. So, this is the linear equation, linear ordinary differential equation. So, integrating factor will be simply a k alpha square t and then the solution we can get now e k alpha square t on the right hand side we have 2 over pi k alpha u naught and e k alpha square t d t and plus a constant or we have u s hat this we can take to the right hand side. So, k alpha square t if we integrate this with respect to t this is anyway a constant. So, we will get e k alpha square t over k alpha square. So, this k alpha will be cancelled and we will get 1 over alpha. So, what we have 2 over pi we will get 1 over alpha also u naught and this e k alpha square t and from this side we have with minus k alpha square t and c e min k minus k alpha square t. So, this u s is 2 over pi and we have u naught over alpha plus c e minus k alpha square t. Now, the initial condition to get these, this constant we have u x 0 is 0 that is given if we take the Fourier transform with respect to x Fourier sign transform. So, we will get alpha 0 is 0. So, with this condition if we set here this t to 0. So, this will be 1 and we have c naught. So, this implies that c naught is minus 2 over pi and u naught over alpha. So, we have this u uh, s alpha t square root 2 over pi u naught over alpha we take common because c is also having this factor. So, we have 1 minus e minus k alpha square t. So, we have this and now we take the inverse uh, sign inverse uh, transform. So, we will get a straight away this u x t and that is 2 over pi and we have 0 to infinity u s hat alpha t sin alpha x d alpha. So, we can substitute that we will get 2 over pi and also u naught will come 0 to infinity we have sin alpha x over alpha and we have 1 minus e minus k alpha square t and d alpha. So, this is the solution. The next problem where we will see that we need to apply the cosine transform. So, next problem solve del u over del t is k del 2 u over del x square and subject to the conditions we have u x 0 is a 0 and for x greater than or equal to 0 and we have u x the first derivative to 0 t as minus mu that is given for t positive and u and again this del u over del x this both goes to 0 as x goes to infinity. So, we have again in the half range so, we can we have possibility to apply for a cosine or for a sine transform, but this u x is given. So, we can apply only for your cosine transform, 
because we have this first derivative information there. So, taking this Fourier cosine transform del u over del t and the k Fourier cosine transform of del 2 u over del x square what we get here d over d t and this is u cosine we denote it by this alpha t and we have this k and now this Fourier cosine of this. So, by that formula we have 2 over pi and u x at this 0 t and minus uh, alpha square and Fourier cosine transform of u. So, we have d u hat c over d t and this we will take or this one because it is a u hat only. So, k alpha square and u cosine transform and here we have k this is given minus mu. So, minus minus will be plus. So, k mu and this 2 over pi. Again we solve this linear equation. So, the integrating factor is E uh, k alpha d t. So, we have E k alpha square t and then we uh, get the solution. So, I am writing this solution directly. So, that solution will be for that in terms of the u cosine transform. 2 over pi mu over alpha square e k alpha square t plus constant and again this initial condition is given that u x 0 is 0. So, we will get u c hat alpha 0 is 0 and if we put it here we will get this c. So, this is 0 and this will be 1. So, c will be minus of this. So, then we get this u c hat is square root 2 over pi mu over alpha square 1 minus e minus k alpha square t. And now taking the inverse uh, sine trans uh, inverse cosine transform. So, inverse cosine transform now to get the answer u x t that is 2 over pi and 0 to infinity u cosine alpha t and cos alpha x d alpha. So, we substitute here. So, we get 2 over pi we get this mu and 0 to infinity cos alpha x over alpha square and we have this 1 minus e minus k alpha square t and d alpha. So, these were the three applications uh, where we have used the heat equation well, the first was uh, by applying the Fourier transform directly to the problem. In the second, we applied the Fourier sine transform depending on the conditions. And in the last example, which we have just done, we applied the cosine transform again depending on the condition. So, we go now for the solution of wave equation. solution of wave equation. So, we take this example that solve the wave, wave equation del 2 u over del t square c square del 2 u over del x square and x is given minus infinity to plus infinity. So, initial conditions that u x 0 is f x for this x and u t x 0 is 0 and we have boundary conditions that u and del u over del x both uh, goes to 0 as absolute value of x goes to infinity. So, we take the Fourier transform because this range is given from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, we have d t d 2 over d t square and u hat alpha t c square and for this we have simply minus alpha square and u hat alpha t. So, our equation is d 2 u hat over d t square 
plus c square alpha square u hat alpha t is equal to 0 and its general solution one can write u hat alpha t is the corrector square m square plus c square alpha square is equal to 0. So, the roots will be uh, plus uh, plus minus uh, this c uh, alpha i. So, for that we have uh, the solution c 1 a constant and cos c alpha t plus c 2 sin c alpha t. So, now the initial conditions the Fourier transform of initial condition we have the u x 0 is f x the first condition. So, here we get u hat alpha 0 is f hat alpha and the second condition we have u t x 0 is equal to 0. So, from here we will get d u hat over d t alpha and as a x approaches to over this t approaches to 0 and this is again 0. So, from the first condition, so our solution is this u hat alpha t c 1 cos and c 2 sin. So, when we put t is equal to 0, uh, this is 0 and we have here 1. So, we get c 1 straight away from the first condition we get c 1 is f hat alpha and from the second condition. So, we need to get the derivative first of this. So, d u hat over d t is minus c 1 and sin c alpha t and we have c alpha plus c 2 and for sin we have cosine now c alpha t and again the derivative of this. So, c only c. So, c alpha. Now, again if we put this t to 0 in this case this will disappear this is 1. So, this is 0. So, we have c 2 and c alpha this is 1. So, in any case the c 2 is 0. So, we have u hat alpha t is f hat alpha and cos c alpha t. Now, we take the inverse uh, Fourier transform inverse Fourier transform. So, what we get u x t 1 over square root 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity f hat alpha and cos c alpha t and then we have minus i alpha x and d alpha. So, u x t is 1 over square root 2 pi and this we take minus infinity to plus infinity f hat alpha as it is. This we write in terms of the again exponential function. So, i c alpha t plus e minus i c alpha t divided by 2 and e minus i alpha x d alpha. So, we have 1 over 2 and this 1 over square root 2 pi then minus infinity to plus infinity f hat alpha and this and this we combine into 1. So, we have e minus i alpha i alpha. So, we have x minus c t d alpha plus again this prefactor 2 pi 1 over square root 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity we have f hat alpha and e minus i alpha with this. So, we have x plus c t and d alpha. So, if we see now that half and this is the definition of the Fourier inverse. So, we have minus i alpha instead of x we have here x minus c t here we have x plus c t. So, we will get f x minus c t plus f x plus c t and this is also known as d l Lambert solution of the wave equation. So, just one more example for the wave equation and then at the end we will solve the Laplace equation. So, we have del 2 u over del t square c square del 2 u over del x square 
and this is given for t positive so in the half range we have this problem so initial conditions are u x 0 is f x and u t x 0 is g x and boundary conditions are u 0 t so u is given at 0 and again the both u and del u over del x they goes to 0 as x goes to infinity. So, now since the value of u is given as per the formula we will apply the sign transform because this function value is given at 0. So, we take the taking sign transform of the PDE. So, we get d 2 over d t square and sign transform of this u will denote by u s hat alpha t. We have c square and then by the derivative theorem we have a square root 2 over pi alpha u 0 t and minus alpha square u s hat alpha t. So, this is d 2 over d t square u hat s alpha t and u 0 t is given 0. So, this term will disappear and this will come to the left hand side. This is alpha square c square and we have u s hat alpha t is equal to 0. So, now again we can find its general solution and that will be given by c 1 cos c alpha t plus c 2 and sin c alpha t. So, we use uh, this initial conditions now to get these constants. So, what we have the first so at t is equal to 0 the initial condition we have first u x alpha 0 is f hat alpha because this was the initial condition now u x 0 is equal to f x. So, we take the Fourier sign transform. So, we get u hat s alpha 0 and the Fourier transform of this f <coughs> and from the second one we have the derivative. So, d over d t and u s hat alpha 0 is g s hat alpha. So, from the first initial condition when we put t is equal to 0 in this. So, this is uh, 0. So, we have c 1 this implies c 1 is this given f s hat alpha. So, this is 1 for the second one we need to uh, get the derivative of this first and then we will put the t is equal to 0. So, we have d u hat s over d t is minus uh, c 1 and cos will be sin uh, c alpha t and then we have c alpha plus c 2 and cos uh, cos so c alpha t and we have c alpha. So, if we put t is equal to 0 this will disappear this is 1 and this is g hat s alpha is equal to c 2 and we have c alpha. So, c 2 is a g s hat alpha over c alpha and c 1 is this. So, we can get now the solution u s alpha t that is f hat s alpha cos c alpha t and plus we have g s hat alpha over the c alpha and then sin c alpha t. Now, we take the inverse taking inverse uh, sin transform we get u x t will be square root 2 over pi we have 0 to infinity and this function here 
so we have uh, us hat alpha t and sin alpha x d alpha so this is our u s alpha t and then multiplied by sin alpha x so we write this now so we have u x t as a square root 2 over pi we have 0 to infinity we have f s alpha and cos c alpha t sin alpha x in one term plus we have g hat alpha over this c alpha and sin c alpha t and sin alpha x then d alpha. Okay, so now we expand this because the two uh, sin alpha and cos beta form. So we take 2 over pi and we have 0 to infinity and this f s hat alpha over 2 and this will be now 2 times sin a uh, cos b will be sin a plus b x plus c t alpha plus sin x minus c t alpha d alpha plus again here 2 over pi with that integral we have 0 to infinity g hat alpha 2 c alpha so 2 sin a sin b we have the cos terms then cos a minus b or b minus a does not matter so x minus c t we write and then minus cos a plus b so x plus c t alpha d alpha now for the first term we can easily uh, write in terms of f taking inverse uh, sine transform because it is given exactly in that form f s hat alpha and the sine and again this other term with the sine so we will get straight away f alpha and here also this f uh, sorry f x plus c t and this will give x minus c t divided by 2 but for this term this alpha is appearing here so in this case what we take consider a function g u so g u is the fourier transform or for inverse fourier transform of this g hat alpha so we have 0 to uh, infinity for your sine transform. So, g s hat alpha this is all for your a sine transform and then we have sin alpha u d alpha and if we integrate this from x minus c t to x plus c t g u d u 2 over pi and we also integrate or uh, change the order of integration. So, first 0 to infinity will come g s hat alpha and then this x minus c t to x plus c t will come and sin alpha u d alpha. So, if we integrate this we will get cos alpha u over alpha and then put the upper limit and the lower limit. So, what we get in this case that this integral x minus c t to x plus c t g u d u is 2 over pi we have 0 to infinity g hat s alpha over this alpha we are getting exactly the term we need there. So, cos x minus c t alpha minus cos x plus c t uh, alpha and then we have d alpha thus the solution is given by. So, if we just now go back to this this we know what will be the the inverse uh, what will be uh, this and uh, here also we know now from this uh, integral that this is equal to that. So, we take uh, we get the solution u x t is half half here and square root 2 over pi 0 to infinity f s hat alpha sin x plus c t we will get the f x plus c t and then for the second one we have x minus c t f x minus a c t and 
for the second term what we just uh, arrived it will be just x minus c t over x plus c t and g u d u. So, this is the solution. Now, we go for the last example of this uh, lecture and that is the solution of Laplace equation. Laplace equation. So, in this case we solve u x x plus u y y is equal to 0, it is given from minus infinity to plus infinity y positive and the boundary conditions are u x 0 is f x again in the same range and this is given that u is bounded is bounded as y approaches to infinity and again u and del u over del x both goes to 0 as mod x goes to infinity. So, we take the Fourier transform both the side we will get this transformed uh, ordinary differential equation and then I will directly write the, the after taking the uh, transform Fourier transform we will get d 2 over d y 2 u hat alpha y and uh, we get minus alpha square u hat alpha y is equal to 0 and its solution we have alpha y c 1. So, with respect to x we have taken again this Fourier transform e alpha y plus c 2 e minus alpha y and the condition is given that u is bounded u is bounded as y approaches to infinity and this will imply straight away that this uh, it is uh, Fourier transform and that we take with respect to x not with respect to y must be also bounded as y approaches to infinity and this will tell us because here we have this alpha y in minus alpha y that c 1 is 0 for alpha positive because otherwise this will blow up. So, to have this boundedness and this c 2 will be 0 for alpha negative in that case this will be unbounded. So, for this boundedness so in any case thus for any alpha what we can write we can eliminate one constant there because we are anyway getting this alpha y is some constant times alpha y uh, the, the absolute value of alpha y we cannot get this alpha because the c 1 will be 0 if alpha is positive and uh, if alpha is negative the c 2 will be 0. So, what we have is some constant and e power minus alpha uh, y. Now, with the boundary condition we have u hat alpha 0 is f hat alpha this is given the boundary condition we have taken the Fourier transform. So, as y 0 we will get the c. So, c will be f hat alpha and now our solution of the transform O d e is f hat alpha and e minus alpha y and now we again apply the same trick to get this inverse this convolution theorem, but we need to get the function the Fourier inverse of, of this. So, let that g x is the Fourier inverse of e minus alpha y and then we take as per the definition 1 over square root 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity e minus alpha y e minus i alpha x d alpha and then this we write cos i alpha x and i sin alpha x. So, since this is the even function and here with cos is also even function and with this sin odd function. So, this over the symmetric integral will be 0. So, we have 2 times 2 pi and 0 to infinity e minus alpha y and cos alpha x will remain. And now, this we can have 2 over square root pi. because this uh, will be square root 2 here and we have 0 to infinity e minus alpha y 
cos alpha x and this is a very simple integration one can just uh, get integrating by parts. So, we will get in this case g x is 2 over pi and this will give us y over x square plus y square. So, this integral will give y over x square plus y square and now we go back to the solution now and that is the Fourier inverse of this f hat alpha and e minus alpha y. So, this was the g hat alpha, this is f hat alpha. So, by the convolution theorem we have 1 over square root 2 pi and we have f and the convolution of this g. So, 1 over square root 2 pi and this convolution we can uh, write down. So, we have 2 over pi and because this g alpha we have this factor. So, we have taken this and minus infinity to plus infinity f beta we introduce this integrating variable and then we have y over x we replace this x by x minus beta for the convolution x minus beta is square plus y square and we have this d beta. So, what we get u x y is 1 over pi square root 2 will cancel square root pi square root pi we have 1 over pi minus infinity to plus infinity we have f beta y over x minus beta whole square plus y square d beta and this uh, solution is also known as uh, the Poisson integral formula. So, that is uh, here we, uh, we complete the discussion on Fourier transform as well as uh, on this rather introductory lectures on transform calculus and we have mainly discussed the Fourier transform and the Laplace transform and each topic was supplemented by, by various well chosen exercises. So, I hope that uh, this lecture or which was rather introductory of course, will help to understand advanced topics uh, in related areas. Thank you.